Hello, and welcome to another video. I'm Amoni Panala, and these are my class videos teaching you how to play the game of EVE Online. This one is actually going to be a bit different from my normal class videos. This is going to be a brief crash course on the lore of EVE Online. We're not going to cover all the nuances. We're not going to dive into each faction at length. We're just going to talk about the broad strokes of how we got here. This is as much entertainment as it is edumacating the masses, right? So, in the beginning, there was the Eve Gate. A big-ass motherfucking wormhole. Now, humans traveled through it for greener pastures. This turned out to be in the words of Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, a stupid-ass decision. What we know as the four empires, Kaldari, Amar, Minmatar, and Galente, were so cosmically fucked when they got to New Eden, they technologically regressed. Plot twist, there was a group of people who came through the gate after the four empires. They were called the Jovians. Now, Everybody makes fun of the Minmatar Republic for their rusty colored ships that have a certain upcycled aesthetic. But the Jove came to New Eden on a wing and a prayer. I mean, their ships were probably made out of duct tape rather than kept together by it. Strange thing is, the Jovians kept to themselves and never went through the regression period that the four main empires suffered. It was a sort of tortoise and the hare situation. Even though the Jove were technologically simplistic, because they didn't regress, they were able to develop distinctly and beyond what the four empires have now. In fact, many of the technologies the four empires rely on, cloning, and capsule technology, implants, and the like, are riffs off of Jovian technology. The Jovians are not hostile to the empires, but they're also way too cool to sit at the kids' table during galactic family dinners. Now, as I said, I'm not going to get into all the factions, but it's worth mentioning one faction in particular from the Jove. They are a unique group in that they live primarily in virtual worlds, plugged in like the Matrix without the sinister implications. They were called the Sleepers. That was all well and good. They were very disciplined about their existence as people who lived terminally online lives. They had a rule. One body for one mind. There's no storing the mind in the cloud after the body dies for these folks. Well, somebody or something didn't get the goddamn memo because one day... A consciousness shows up in the virtual space and everybody's like, OMG, stop trying to make disembodied consciousness happen. It's not gonna happen. Except this other consciousness had friends. And they killed the sleepers in their, uh, well, sleep. Yeah. So now you've got the other consciousnesses inhabiting the sleepers like some techno demon possession and that's how we got the drifters those nasty motherfuckers you see in wormhole space always wrecking shit are the remnants technically the drifters themselves pieced out to who the fuck knows where while the things that are always killing new explorers who warp to the wrong relic site are the drones the sleepers build to protect them for as dangerous as those drones are they didn't do shit for the sleepers. Now, about the four empires. I have heard it said in other lore explainers that there are no good guys in New Eden. I call bullshit. But in order to understand why, let's talk about these four empires. The Kaldari are an autocratic militancy. Everything in a Kaldari citizen's life is in service to the state, and the thing the Kaldari do is pick fights with the Galente Federation. Why are these two fighting? Kinda depends on who you ask. 
Some might say it was a series of technological trades gone wrong, others would say it was political assassinations, and others still would say it was probably the absolute bonkers amount of fucking terrorism. Now, the Galente Federation are a democracy. No, not like the peace-loving hippie shit from Star Trek or the peacetime of the Re Galactic Republic in Star Wars. No, the Federation is a surveillance state democracy. Your basic needs are covered by the state, but they are watching you. The NSA and Homeland Security have nothing on the Galente Federation. The rando on the street is probably living a good life until they speak out about something the government cares about. I say this because it can be tempting to hear that the Galente are a democracy and think, oh, they're the good guys. But just like in real life, democracy doesn't make a society good. The Amar are a theocracy. It's a bit like if the Imperium of Man from 40. Warhammer 40k actually put their ships through the car wash once in a while and bling them out in gold. The Amar also have a weird thing about theocracy. For a long time they subjugated the Minmatar people, and it sucked ass for the Minmatar. There were revolts, the Minmatar got themselves free, yippee! It's worth pointing out here that the Minmatar basically devoted themselves to stomping out the Amar as an oppressive slave-holding society. The Kaldari State and the Galente Federation both saw the Amar Minmatar conflict as a way to wage a proxy war. They each supported a side. The Kaldari State gave aid to the Amar. The Galente Federation helped the Minmatar Republic. Everybody's happy, right? Right? Well, everybody was happy except for Sancha Kuvake. Sancha was basically a silicon tech bro, or all of them, wrapped into one. He believed he could develop technologies to create a utopia. How? Well, basically he came up with a way to create zombies using capsular tech. This didn't sit well with the rest of the galactic society, so they kind of told him to fuck off. His ideal was basically Plato's Republic. The intellectuals live high on the hog and free from any sort of work that wasn't related to fostering their genius. This would be made possible by the cybernetically enslaved population serving these philosopher games. Sancha was basically chased to the fringes of New Eden living in wormhole space and whatever dark corners he could find. It was assumed that he died long ago until Sancha and his fleets of cyborg slave warriors emerged. That's how we got incursions. A few years ago, ships starting pouring out from abyssal space. These strange invaders, these Triglavians, took over entire systems and changed them. You'd go from one system to the next, and it was night and day, literally. Keep in mind that when the Triglavians showed up for the first time, we hadn't seen metaliminal storms before. So the idea that people could radically alter a system to make it more to their liking was new. They were insisting things like wanting us to prove ourselves and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, Concord and the Four Empires were having none of that, so they dumped tons of money and resources into the creation of what is essentially a standing fleet called Edencom. Edencom waged war against the Triglavians. This is where us as Capsuleers got to participate in the history of New Eden. Capsuleers were able to choose which side in the confrontation they would pick. The Triglavians eventually took the systems they had captured and created an abyssal region which we know today as Pachvin. The war between Triglav and Edencom is basically over. Like, it ended, but skirmishes break out all the time in Pachvin as the two do get out. And that is my broad 
overview of the lore of EVE Online. If you're thinking, wait, so which which one of these is the good guy you mentioned in the beginning? It's the motherfucking Minmatar Republic. Out of all the major factions, they're the ones who choose to fight for a cause that wasn't about oppressing others. Sure, the fighting with the Amar has been brutal, but you don't put a boot on somebody's neck and expect them to fight fair. Thank you for joining me on a little story time. If you like my videos, you can support me by liking this video, following the channel, and sharing my videos with your friends. Fly dangerously, folks!